is one of those really, if you try to make this a piece in balsa wood, it's really difficult. This way you get the nice edges. I use an exactly the same techniques. And keep in mind, we're not making an exact scale copy of the cockpit. I'm looking for the flavor. And it really would be impossible to do a scale, totally scale cockpit as if this was a scale model. We want to get some of the flavor. And if you look in the back of a Spitfire, you see a lot of areas that have these lightning holes. So I'm trying to make this a, uh, well, it's kind of a fantasy cockpit, but again, if you get the flavor, and you do it with the minimum amount of really hard work. This is this is a relatively easy way to make this look aircraft. Has that look of lightened aluminum. I figure these little techniques out. It's only a matter of time before you can find all different ways to apply them. In this case, the thin CA harden up the edges. Another part of doing this kind of a cockpit is to create illusions. Now one of the illusions we want to create, because we want to keep the main cockpit area sealed off from any of the dust or dirt or whatever that, that would eventually accumulate inside the fuselage of the plane. Remember the fuselage is open at the wingtip, it's open at several other places too. And what happens if you have a, ver a big gap somewhere in the cockpit, a big hole, all these little balls of chips and things wind up working their way into the plane, no matter how careful you are. So I try to seal as much as I can, and then just leave one little pinhole so moisture can get out. But what I want to do now, and it's a, it's a really excellent trick you can apply over and over again, is create an illusion that these holes go all the way through. And the way I'm going to do that is with a black ink marker. I'm going to blacken the inside of these holes, and then blacken the part where this goes on the fuselage. So that when you look through it, it'll tend to look like, and I'll just paint the outside, it'll tend to look like these holes are going right through even though they're not. It's like an, it's an illusional thing. And if you can create illusions, well, one of the things is we won't have, well, we won't, hopefully we won't have a lot of balsa chips floating around inside the cockpit. And you've seen many, a, I've had plenty myself, planes that there was a big gap, a big hole going into the cockpit area. And sure as, you know, sure as you're living, what happens is you wind up with this a chunk of balsa wood or something floating up. It'll always stick to the pilot's nose. Anyway, making these little aircraft looking pieces with the lightning holes, I think it adds a lot to the cockpit and obviously not much weight at all. The 64th plywood adds nice edging and burning the holes gives you a nice crisp edge. Now this is just an ordinary Sharpie marker. And I'm working from the back. Again, we're trying to create illusions. You really can't make a totally scale cockpit because the arrow shaft always gets in the way and several other things. We can't really do the seat in scale. But this is one of the things you can do to create an illusion. Now one of the things I want to do here, I want to mark where this is. Remember, we're trying to create an illusion here. So what I can do here is I'm going to mix up some slow drying epoxy with some black dye in it. Just put a very thin coating on there. I'll let that piece sit in there and dry. While it's drying, I'll make up some other details. Now, whenever you mix dye into epoxy, it's a good idea. Try not to add too much. You just need enough to darken it. And in this case, this will hopefully help create that illusion of depth that we want. And again, another tip here is anytime you think the epoxy's mixed, mix it another two minutes. It's always a good, good investment that you've got it well mixed, especially when you have dye in, because you can't see the color change. It's drying, we can go have a nice cup of coffee. Come back and then we'll start working on some more detailing.
tried, I never had, never have done this before, is I put a little bit of this on a Q-tip to try to get a nice flat look like you would get in a shadow. Since this is supposed to, like in theory, be open. Just took a little bit of ink and on the end of a Q-tip. And again, I may want to paint that, but for right now, a real Spitfire. The seat is different. There's no bracing inside, but I don't want to take a chance on having that canopy get squeezed. But I try to capture that look anyway. Anyway, the next thing I want to do is make up the simulated radio and put the flooring, the decking in there. Now what happens in this book, it shows the early model Spitz had this really crude looking radio and I don't really like the way that looks. Because the, the truth is most people wouldn't even know that that's a radio, they'd think it was uh, you know, something that just was glued in there. And I looked from a couple different angles, to see all that, that aircraft stuff with the holes in it. That, I'm looking for the look here, I'm not looking for actual scale details. Again, this is what this looks like in the real prototype and there is no floor, well I can't do that in this model. I need a floor to seal that area from dust and dirt. Anyway, by looking at the uh, several of these pictures here, I'm trying to come up with, and what I did, I, I thought about this while I was having coffee, what I'm going to do is make up the radio similar to the one that I had in the original Spitfire. That really caught everybody's eye. So that's what I'm going to try to do is make, this will be a simulation, but yet try to still keep the flavor. Now this is the color the zinc chromate color that most closely matches the pictures of the interior parts of the Spitfire. So I'm going to use this. This I just picked this up at a, uh, I don't know, a while back on a little hobby shop. It's made for trains. Any place they sell HO trains, you can buy this. And it dries with a nice effect. And the only trouble with this paint, it's enamel. It's not lacquer, so you have to kind of be careful you don't mix and match. This gives a nice scale effect. Now another choice we have is we could try to use the uh, Road Act Open mix up these colors. But since this is inside the canopy, I don't think that's really going to be uh, one of our high priorities. Anyway, I've used this in the past and it does dry up very nicely. See now the reason I'm painting this ahead of time Keep in mind what the what the deal is here that I'm trying to do. Anything that I'm going to seal in or put things in the way, you know, it's like, it's like you have to kind of think about the steps here. Once I put that radio and that front bulkhead in, this would be very difficult to paint. So it's good to kind of lay this out in your mind ahead of time. Once this dries up and I'm happy with it, then I can go right ahead. just one step at a time and this is what the videos are good for see like what I do now I've kind of looked in the last couple of days at some of the videos and try to remember the things that work and there's always things that don't work and try to boil it down to where it's at least you have the best chance of getting it right the Strega video for the bubble canopy is pretty good and the Seafire one is pretty intense too so Anyway, starting to look like a cockpit. Once that gets in there, now one of the things that I like to do, again to create illusions, is simply get different textures into that cockpit area. In this case, what I'm doing, or what I'm going to try to do, never say doing, always say trying to do is make a little, the flooring out of a dull, the 600 sandpaper, which would simulate a dull kind of a surface. And again, I'll make up a little pattern here. What I try to do is, again is just get different textures, different surfaces when the sun reflects in there. It doesn't look like it's all one big piece of balsa wood or whatever. Now here's where having a model that's